Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show Traveling Road Edition from the Rick Helps Real Estate Travel Trailer. You can see I've got my workstation set up right here and a little fire and a little football. That's a fake fire, but it's cool. I like it. Just installed it uh, out here yesterday uh, with uh, one of my boys. And uh, today, uh, Pat might come out with his motorcycle and we might barbecue a couple steaks. So, Welcome to my weekend. I'm enjoying it so far. Let's talk about real estate. The obvious thing is sales are still really slow. They're only 2,200 every seven days. That's uh, kind of a historic low. It actually it is. Last time we saw those low numbers were back in 2008 when everything collapsed. But the big story of the day that, that is not really making the headlines is just how low the number of new listings are that are coming. I'm going to read a couple numbers here for you. It said that... Uh, um, we regard something about 4,250 new listings as normal, but in 2022, we're getting less than 3,000. Right now, we're getting about 3,000 new listings coming on every seven days, and 2,200 of them going under contract. That's a gap of, obviously, 800. At one point, that gap got up to 1,800, 2,000. That's when we saw prices start to come down faster than they are now. Right now, that's why prices have kind of stalled because there's only an 800 gap people aren't moving and what we're seeing is that new listings are down about 45 to 47 percent across the valley and again there's a comment here that says we uh back in 2005 when we experienced a rapid cooling of demand during the second half of this year brought on by a lot of listings from people trying to exit the market before prices fell there were large numbers of empty houses that had been purchased for speculative reason. Situation now is completely different. Far higher percentage of homes are occupied, and the high mortgage rates mean moving home will eliminate a nice cheap mortgage and most likely require a new expensive one to take its place. We've been saying it's called being stuck, mortgage freeze. People are sitting in rates below 4%, and they go, well, why do I want to sell? Because I'm just going to have a higher mortgage payment. And what surprised me is it's uh, even more prevalent in condos and townhomes. People are staying put. We're not really seeing this in the above $1 million, though. We're not seeing a drastic uh, reduction in new listings. They're, they're double-digit, but not anywhere near the 45 to 47% that we're seeing across the valley. Now, there's going to be some people out there saying, well, you know, Rick, stop peddling your, P your BS. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just telling you where the numbers are. And there also are people going to say, well, once this recession hits and we get rampant high unemployment, things are going to fall apart. That's true. But we're going to need that high unemployment. It's going to have to be pretty bad for these listings to pop up. Now, back in 2008, they popped up to 58,000. And then behind that, we had 30,000 pre-foreclosures. Right now we have 20,000 listings active, and we have about between five and 800 homes in pre-foreclosure, which is, when you look at the chart, kind of down near the bottom. So a lot of things have to change, would have to change rapidly. Now, inflation, um, you can never tame inflation in just a few short months. So we're going to be in this situation for probably a year, year and a half. During that year, year and a half, it already looks, based on what's out in the past couple of weeks, that interest rates are going to have their peak, and then they're going to come back down. And they're probably going to bounce around for most of 2023. 20, there are economists out there saying that we're going to see low rates again by the first quarter. Others that say that we're going to see extremely high rates by the first or second quarter. Nobody knows. It's real estate prediction season. Redfin just laid off, I think it was like 11,000 people. Keep in mind, though, that's because they closed their uh, iBuying division. They didn't have a lot of homes in in Phoenix, so don't be looking for a bargain there. And uh, most of their layoffs are up in Seattle where they're headquartered. And a lot of their uh, realtors were actually salaried employees versus many brokerages, if not most, don't have salaried employees. They're all independent contractors, 1099. So you're not going to see a lot of layoffs in the uh, real estate industry. You'll see people drop out, and we're seeing that now. We're seeing layoffs in the lending industry pretty extensive because there's no refinancing going on and we're seeing layoffs going on in title companies because there just isn't that many transactions to keep people busy enough 
But unemployment's going to have to spike. Now, going into January, we usually see more listings come on seasonally. Now, we're seeing new listings drop now seasonally, but also when you compare it to last November, we're, remember, we're 47% below last November when we saw the seasonal dip. So this isn't just a holiday dip that we're seeing. This is the fact that new listings just aren't showing up. Are they going to show up in January? Um, hard to tell. There really isn't any data I'm looking at that says, yep, here they come. Um, coming soon listings are down to about 400. They used to be about 900. A lot of that was driven by the 72 sold people. They would put homes on for at least two weeks as a coming soon. They drove that number higher. Um, I'm not seeing any back on market now, but you never do in November, December, uh, unless it's a cancel or a, uh, a transaction that fell out. In other words, it didn't go well during the inspection period or the buyers couldn't qualify. So the back on market is kind of hanging around 500. It, will that spike in January as people decided to take their homes onto market for the holidays and now decide to put them back on? That'll be a number we watch, but it won't drive the market. Even if it triples, it just won't have any impact. Open door is still 11% of our listings between 400 and 600,000. What are they going to do? I thought they were going to dump them in Q4, and they're not. Interesting to me. Are they hanging on, and what are they hanging on for? Are they thinking that perhaps the market will kind of stabilize, and they will over time be able to unload these homes? Because they've got a really high burn rate on their cash right now. So they can hang on, from what I've read, about another year. But something's going to have to change with them. But they're affecting that price range between 400000 and 600000 So that's that's a number to watch. And, uh, and some of you see a lot of open-door homes in, in your neighborhood. So as we go forward looking into 2023, interest rates drive the market. And it drives affordability. All the other numbers out there, oh, inventory is going to climb if interest rates get higher and higher because the gap between the number of new listings coming on and homes sold is going to grow. And as that gap grows, that puts downward pressure on pricing. If that gap doesn't grow, then we're just going to be muddling along here for a while. It's going to be a very interesting year. And I'm very curious to see just how low active sales will go as we go through the holiday season. Until then, do me a favor and smash that like button. Take on the day. Have a great weekend.